British Prime Minister Boris Johnson and Kenyan President Uhuru Kenyatta are co-hosting a global summit on education. They're calling on international leaders to help rebuild education systems in hard-hit countries. A particular focus will be on the handful of regions, countries in the Sahel region of Africa, which are considered fragile conflict states. Last year, 5,000 schools were forced to close because of threat of violence, exploitation and kidnapping there. The situation is particularly acute in Nigeria. Nigeria has a kidnapping crisis on its hands. This year alone, there have been more than 150 of these incidents in the north of the country, with a significant number of victims seized from schools. Just this morning, at about six, I received a phone call that they have entered the school, kidnappers, and all our children are back, including my daughter inside. We rush down here, we confirm that they are all back. The attackers are known locally as bandits. Armed gangs littered across parts of northern Nigeria with no specific ideology. They often take their victims into remote areas like forests where they cannot be easily located. The exact number of incidents is hard to know, but even the reported cases of school kidnappings make for a long, sobering list. The situation is so desperate that, according to UN estimates, more than a thousand schools are currently closed across northern Nigeria. The insecurity has forced nearly 400,000 students to stay home for their own safety. According to Amnesty International, that leaves the education of an entire generation at risk of being lost. Well, for more on that, I'm now joined by Julia Gillard. She's the former Prime Minister of Australia, now the head of the Global Partnership for Education. Welcome to DW. Uh, you're trying to raise money for better education, but we just saw in our report that hundreds of schools in the region are closed due to insecurity, attacks, kidnappings. This is a problem that money can't solve, is it? It certainly is a major problem and resources are always needed, but more than resources, uh, which is why at the Global Partnership for Education we conceive of ourselves as a partnership that tries to bring people together to solve problems, as well as a global fund to mobilise new resources. So these situations are complex. There is never one easy snap-your-finger solution. It is about working with the government working with communities, trying to change attitudes. Resources do assist with that, but certainly a spirit of partnership and joint endeavour is needed. Hmm. The other big crisis uh, is, of course, the, the coronavirus pandemic. UNICEF says that 170 million children globally uh, school, uh, had their schools closed for a year. What are the consequences? We are desperately concerned that the COVID crisis could push the world backwards on education. We came into this crisis with around 250 million children of school age who weren't in school and hundreds of millions more receiving a substandard education. But we were making progress. We were improving things. As schools have closed around the world, we have been truly concerned that like in the Ebola health epidemic, when schools closed, that when they reopened, the most at-risk children would not return, particularly the girls. So informed by that Ebola experience during this pandemic, GPE has mobilised to be there with countries to try and maintain educational continuity and to try and ensure school systems are ready to bring every child back into education. But more needs to be done, which is why we're here in London today at a summit co-hosted by the Prime Minister of the UK and the President of Kenya. Mm. We've put out an appeal to the world to ask people to raise their hands and to contribute new resources so we can keep building rather than being pushed backwards by COVID. Uh, but you also said that once the pandemic is over, we shouldn't just go back to school as we know it, but, but, but that we have to fundamentally reform education. What do you want to see changed? Yes, we are in the business of transforming education. And I think what that looks like is every child getting access, no matter where they live, no matter how remote, no matter the county 
characteristics of that child, every boy, every girl, not having disability or ethnicity exclude children from school. And then when they're in school, that they get a full cycle of schooling, a year of uh, before school, and then 12 years of schooling. And it is at a quality standard, which enables them to be ready for life. We know we live in a world of constant change, of huge changes, and getting those foundational skills during your school years is the key to unlocking everything else in life and enabling you to navigate whatever the future might throw at you. Well, with all the, the other problems the world is facing uh, right now, which is uh, on the news every day, would you agree that leaders, uh, world leaders are taking the education crisis not seriously enough? I think world leaders have got a bulging in trays. There's no doubt about that. This has been a stressful time for all of the global community and a stressful time for those who are leading during this age. But I do believe that whether it's in Germany or many other parts of the world, uh, that there is a recognition that education is the profound change agent and a focus on girls' education. Uh, and there's been a great spirit of partnership as we've got ready for today's event, particularly putting a focus on girls' education. Julia Gillard there from the Global Partnership for Education from London. Thank you very much. Thank you.